The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. You got to hear this. Listen to this. This is written in the Kisve Arizal, and he says the following. In, the, in his time in Tzfas, so there was this peasant, uh, a person who knew nothing, an Amaret, who knew nothing, who never learned. Poor people, farmers, they never, he never learned anything. One night, one Friday night, he comes to shul. First Friday night he ever came to shul, the rabbi is up there, and what is he speaking about? The parsha, and he's talking about the lechem hapanim on the shulchan, and he's talking about the lechem hapanim, the twelve breads that were warm from one week to the next in the Quranim. And this guy's sitting there, and he's listening to the Beis Hamidash. And somebody asked the rabbi, "Well, Beis Hamidash is destroyed, so what now?" So he says, "No, there's no lechem hapanim until the, until Mashiach comes. There's no lechem hapanim." This guy goes home that Friday night, says to his wife. We got to do something. She says, what do, you gotta, what do you mean? She says, God, 2,000 years, he hasn't had any food. He used to have bread, 12 breads, and now the base of Misha is destroyed. He doesn't have any food. What should we do? She says, we'll bake the 12 chalas. We'll feed them. She says, how are we going to get it to him? She says, listen, Thursday we'll bake them. Thursday night I'll sneak into shul and I'll put them in the Aron HaKodesh. Because that's where Hashem is, right? Like the Oron in the base Hamidosh. And we'll see if he eats it. Fantastic plants. True story. Kisra Riza writes this story. Okay? So, you can imagine Thursday, he gets the best flower. And these two Amaratsim, who didn't know anything about anything, bake these 12 chalas dancing. Will Hashem eat the chalas or not? Right? And he takes this bag, hot chalas, and at 2.30 in the morning, sneaks in to the shul in Tzfas and he puts it into the Oran Kodesh. and he says to his wife okay tomorrow at 2.30 after we I work before we come home I'll check the Oran Kodesh and see if he ate them so next morning this guy doesn't go to shul next morning Gabai comes to shul the shamas comes to shul he opens up the shul wow it smells like a bakery it smells like a bakery he starts looking around the whole shul women's section this section it smells like it's coming from the Oran Kodesh. Chala in the Oran HaKodesh. <laughs> All right, you never know. He opens up the Oran HaKodesh, 12 chalot. He says, wow, there must be a tzaddik that lives in the city who wants to give chalot to the poor people and he doesn't want anyone to know who he is. So he put it in the Oran HaKodesh. I'll take them and I'll give them to the poor people. So he takes the chalos, chalot and he gives them out to the poor people. This guy shows up at 2.30. No one's around. He's all excited. Oh, I hope Hashem ate it. I hope Hashem ate it. I hope Hashem ate it. He's all excited. He opens it up. It's gone. He runs home. Hashem ate it. We fed Hashem. He's not starving 2,000 years. He had no bread. Now he finally ate it. He had something to eat. He's all excited. They're like, okay, listen, this is our secret. We're not telling the rabbi. We're not telling anybody. We're feeding Hashem. So you can't imagine in this room the excitement. Every single Thursday, they're baking food for Hashem. And this is, this is like a miracle. And he comes every Friday at 2.30, and the chalas are gone. And the chalas are gone, and the chalas are gone. And our day, if something happened like that, they would probably say, well, Hashem, he's healthy. Well, you know, they would bake whole wheat. But that was, in those days, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't whole wheat. It wasn't whole wheat. Okay. A year. It's going on for a year. One, one day, one night, the guy comes in at 2.30 at night with the chalas sneaking in and the rav, the rabbi of the shul, happened to have been there. And he was in the Ezra Snashim and he sees a guy sneaking to our quarters thinking the guy's stealing the Sefer Torah, Sefer Torah. He comes running down to his, what are you doing? Caught the guy with the chalas in his hand. What are you doing with the Arna Kodesh? Why'd you open the Arna Kodesh? You're stealing the Sefer Torah? He's like, Rabbi, you have to swear to me you won't tell anybody. I'm not swearing nothing. What are you doing? He said, you can't tell anyone. What are you doing? He said, well, last year was by your speech, and you said God was, you know, he, he doesn't have any bread. So, if you don't tell anyone, and, I, and you'll see, see I, we bake these 12 breads, and then I put it here, and if you'll come with me tomorrow at 2.30, you'll see that they're all gone. Hashem is eating, don't tell anyone, Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi looks at this guy and says, you idiot! You are Ma'aret! You are Bikairas! You're feeding Hashem? Hashem eats bread? What's wrong with you? The lechem upon was for the kehanim. Hashem doesn't eat bread. Go home to your wife, you fool. Like, what, what, 2.30 every every Friday, the chalas are gone. She's sure they're gone. We give it out to the poor people. 
We thought somebody was giving tzedakah. Not feeding Hashem, you fool. Broken. Goes home to his wife. I'll show it to you in the kids' fairy what he writes. Not in Neuridik. Goes home to his wife. Says, I just met the rabbi. You know what we've been doing for the last year? We've been baking bread and they're giving it to the poor. Hashem doesn't eat bread. The lechem upon him was with the kahanim. He's too with tzabrachim. Not broken. Tzabrachim means they were broken. Shabbos. Shabbos. That Rizal goes to sleep Friday night and he has a dream. And he writes this. And in my dream came the sar, came the malach from the other side, which is the malach that represents Hashem. And the malach said to me that I should go to the rabbi's house and I should tell him that a Baruch who said that for the last 2,000 years he has no reach nichoach from this world since the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. And for the last year he once again had the reach nichoach I don't know how you would translate that even into English. The Reach Nichoach of the Beis Hamigdosh was back. These two people baking those chalas gave Hashem so much hana. And you, Rabbi, took it away from God. Tell the Rabbi that he will die a terrible death. He will not make it through Shabbos. And that Rizal writes the Kachoya. He died a terrible death. Mincha time, that Shabbos. Was the rabbi wrong, guys? Does Hashem eat bread? <coughs> Wasn't he right that they were fools? That my Amaratzim? God doesn't eat bread. What do you think you're doing? What should the rabbi have said? God's eating your bread and continued playing on? He should have said what he said. God doesn't eat bread. What are you doing? That's the MS! Everybody in this room, what's the MS? The MS is God doesn't eat bread. The MS is you're an Amoret. If you think you have to feed God, there's something wrong with you. He's not human. So what the rabbi said was right. And Hashem said, no. The rabbi hurt these two people. The rabbi will die because his right is wrong if it hurts others. <laughs> but this story takes it a step further what did the Malach tell the Arizal the Malach told the Arizal I understand that part of the story he hurt these people's feelings should have been right but the Malach told the Arizal something crazy the Malach told the Arizal that this Chala which was Sheker Hashem doesn't eat Chala was a Reach Nichoach like a Mizbeach in the Beis Hamingdosh. But it's not. It's Chala. It's Sheker. It's wrong. No, said Hashem. They made it with love. They made it because they love me. So even though they were wrong, they were right. And even though the rabbi was right, he was wrong. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.